What's up everybody? Dane here from Moving to Canada and right now we are in Ottawa, Ontario. These are the parliament buildings right behind us. Democracy happens right here. Laws are made in all of these buildings around us. This is a government city through and through. And maybe being a government city is one of the reasons that Ottawa has a reputation for being one of Canada's um, quieter cities. But we are here today to tell you eight things that you need to know before moving to Ottawa. And we are gonna break down some of those stereotypes and show you that Ottawa has a lot going for it. Don't think I can do that? Just watch me. Get it? That's like a Canadian politics reference. Oh, whatever. Let's just do it. First on the docket, Ottawa is the capital of Canada. I mean, look at this gorgeous view. No, I'm not talking about me. It looks like a capital city. Ottawa is the fourth largest city in Canada with a population of about 1 million. And while it might not have the hustle and bustle of its three bigger cousins, Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver, being the capital city does afford it some distinct advantages. For example, Ottawa doesn't just host parliament, but also hosts a ton of government departments and agencies, which makes the city an attractive option for government employees and policy wonks. The elusive Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada even has an office in this city in this building right behind me. Being the capital of Canada also makes Ottawa a significant tourist destination, and the city works hard to earn that reputation. The city is well-maintained, gorgeous architecture, this is the Supreme Court behind me right now, and it has a ton of national museums and cultural institutions. More on that later. Plus, the beauty of the Ottawa River and the Rideau Canal. Ottawa's hot. If Ottawa was a person, Ottawa would be Sandra O oh in that gorgeous blue dress in the second season of Killing Eve. And Sandra O oh is even from Ottawa. So thank you, Ottawa, for gifting the world with Sandra O. Oh. The second thing you need to know about is neighborhoods and housing options in Ottawa. Ottawa is a pretty compact city. The downtown city center area is pretty walkable. If you start at Parliament and you head east, first you'll come to the Byward Market, which is a trendier neighborhood full of shops and restaurants, but definitely a pricier area. Further east still, you come to Vanier, where we are right now, a more affordable residential neighborhood. Starting back at Parliament, if you walk south down bustling Bank Street, you'll get to Center Town, a pricier sort of residential commercial district. And then through this area, the Glebe, a neighborhood with a ton of historic charm. Bank Street is also close to some culturally distinct neighborhoods, like Chinatown, where I was stoked to find this pork bun. Nearby is also Little Italy and The Village, which hosts some cute little queer businesses like Tea's Pub, although the queer scene in Ottawa is a little smaller than what you'll find in Montreal and Toronto. Of course, Ottawa has options beyond these downtown neighborhoods as well. There are a ton of suburbs to choose from, which can be great options, especially if you're raising a family. From Orleans in the east, to Nepean in the south, to Kanata in the west, you've got options. And this doesn't even include the rural suburbs even further outside the city. Now, let's talk about pricing. Of course, the price is going to vary heavily depending on the type of place and the location, but according to the website Numbeo, the average one-bedroom apartment in the downtown core is going to set you back about $1,600 a month. Outside the downtown core, that's going to be closer to $1,200. For a three-bedroom apartment in the downtown core, it'll set you back about $2,700 a month, and outside the downtown core, that's going to be closer to $2,000. Now, I would be a fool if I talked about housing and neighborhoods in Ottawa without mentioning Gatineau. Gatineau is a separate little city right across the Ottawa River. Right there, that's Gatineau. And together, Gatineau and Ottawa make up the national capital region. And a lot of people who choose to work in Ottawa actually choose to live in Gatineau because of the more affordable housing prices. According to the website Numbeo, a one-bedroom apartment in downtown Gatineau will set you back about $1,000 a month. And that's about $600 cheaper than the average we see in Ottawa. But where you live is going to depend heavily on the third thing that you need to know about living in Ottawa, your transportation options. If you're living in the Ottawa suburbs, or if you're across the river in Gatineau, having a car could be a good option for you. But just be aware that the rush hour traffic can be a little bit brutal. It is also totally possible to get around Ottawa without a car, especially if you live close to the downtown area. Ottawa operates a uh, decent public transit system called OC Transpo, which includes a broad range of buses, like those that you can see behind me here, and the O-Train system, which is a light rail transit system. The O-Train will eventually connect Ottawa's suburbs, but right now its range is a little bit limited. They've actually shut down the entire second line during the O-Train expansion project, and 
Historically, the O-Train has had a bit of trouble navigating when it snows outside, which, you know, it's Canada, so... OC Transpo will set you back $360 for a single regular fare or $122.50 for a regular monthly pass. Walking and biking are great options for getting around, and in the winter you can even skate pretty far on the Rideau Canal. Plus, in recent years, quirkier transportation options have started cropping up, like these little scooters that'll take you around pretty fast. Although I'm gonna be honest with you, whenever I see someone on one of these scooters, like, I kinda wanna push them off. Like, I'm not going to, but like, I want to. The fourth thing we're talking about in today's video is the jobs market in Ottawa. And honestly, it's pretty solid. I've already talked about the range of federal government jobs available in the city, but you should be aware that a lot of the federal government jobs require some degree of bilingualism in both English and French. The city also has a bustling cultural and tourism sector with jobs in restaurants, bars, and hospitality. And in recent years, Ottawa has emerged as a hotspot for tech companies setting up shop in Canada. In 2020, Ottawa ranked as the city in North America with the highest concentration of tech talent. Pretty huge for a small city, but it also makes sense. Ottawa is a more affordable location for tech companies to set up shop. Lower cost of housing, more affordable cost of living, especially when compared to cities like New York and San Francisco or Toronto and Vancouver. Shopify, a recent success story in Canadian tech, has its offices here, right downtown. But if you head to the Kanata North Tech Park, which is located in the western suburb of Kanata, you can find more than 540 companies that have set up shop, including tech giants Nokia and HP. Okay, number five, let's talk about the weather. Guys, Ottawa has a standard Canadian climate. Be ready for winter because it's gonna be cold and it's gonna snow. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, in January, the coldest month of the year, the average daily low is minus 14 degrees Celsius, but this doesn't include the wind chill, and during a good deep freeze period, you can expect that temperature to drop way lower. Get good boots, and a good hat, and good gloves, and good friends, because the embers of friendship will keep you warm on a cold winter's night. Now, let's talk about the summer. At the time we're filming this, it's late September, which means technically summer just ended, but as you can see, it's still pretty warm here. In July, which is the warmest month of the year, the average daily high is 27 degrees Celsius, which is really quite lovely, and the warm temperatures get everyone out and about. You know, drinking on patios, going to outdoor festivals, hanging out in parks, it is lovely. And let's talk a little bit more about getting out and about in the city in the sixth thing you need to know about, cultural and green spaces in Ottawa. Let's Let's start our conversation about cultural spaces here at the Byward Market. As you can see, this is a cute little area. It's very pedestrian friendly. There are a ton of cafes, little boutique shops, restaurants, bars, clubs, like the Lookout Bar. As far as green space is concerned, Ottawa has a ton of parks and Gatineau Park, which is a giant beautiful park, is only a short drive from the city. But let's focus in on two specific green spaces. First, here at the Central Experimental Farm. This is a functioning farm, as you might be able to tell from these bovine beauties behind me, plus an agricultural research area. And it's giant. Hey, always a black fly, no matter where I go, I'll die with a black fly picking my bones. In North Ontario, I -O, in North Ontario. Another part of the experimental farm is the ornamental gardens, where we are now. But there's also an arboretum and tons of other cool stuff. It's a great place for a walk, or a family adventure. Next, let's talk about the Rideau Canal. I love the canal. It is gorgeous no matter the season. It's a beautiful place to hang out with friends in the summer, gorgeous spot for a PSL inspired walk in the fall, and in the winter, it freezes over and turns into a giant, super long skating rink that just runs through the whole city. Like, that's cool. Ottawa also hosts a ton of awesome festivals, from the musically inclined Blues Fest to the greatest festival ever conceived, Ottawa Rib Fest, a festival celebrating ribs. However, if you have more refined taste, you can also check out the amazing music, dance, and theater options here at the National Arts Centre. I actually once played xylophone here in high school. I am literally famous. Canada also has seven national museums. Seven. Let's see if we can name them all. First, we have the National Gallery of Canada right here behind me, Six Spider A. 
Then we got the Canadian War Museum where I went in high school and I cried a lot. I was a xylophone player, so I had big feelings. Then we have the Museum of History, which is technically in Gatineau, but which has a really awesome kids section. Then there is the Museum of Nature, the Science and Technology Museum, the Aviation and Space Museum, and the Agriculture and Food Museum. My body is a food museum. In the seventh thing you need to know about, we wanted to give a shout out to Ottawa's post-secondary schooling options. This is Carleton University, perhaps best known for its journalism school, but it's also renowned for its programs in international and public affairs. No surprise considering the location, and for its programs in tech and architecture. This is a campus of the University of Ottawa, another great schooling option here in the city. This is a bilingual university offering its programs in both French and English, and it has a huge range of programs across a ton of disciplines. Notable standouts are uh, software engineering, its health sciences programs, and a super cool program, Integrated Food Sciences, that's actually in partnership with Le Cordon Bleu Ottawa. Another schooling option in Ottawa is Algonquin College, which has a campus in the city. It offers some programs uh, that offer degrees, diplomas, and certificates, and can be a really great option, especially if you're looking for vocational or technical training. Okay, so we've made it to the last item on our list, which is your option for eating out in Ottawa. Ottawa has a ton of different cuisine options, uh, and our video editor, Shannon, the woman behind the camera, who lived in Ottawa for several years, made me promise that on this trip we could showcase Shawarma King on Bank Street. So that's what we're showing off here. But I'm going to start a thread in the comments section so you guys can all post your favorite local joints in Ottawa and we can get a bit of traffic to our favorite local eateries. I'm so excited to tuck into this. But before I do, just wanted to say thank you all for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure you like the video. If you want more Canadian immigration content, destination content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And we will see you next time. Mm, um, oh, it's a very good farmhouse.